So now I'm very happy to welcome a second person from the political field, which is Christoph Korher. He was just coming from a meeting very shortly, uh, give us a view on his idea how the ideal educational utopia should look. And uh, then we could enter a discussion, just as we did at the end of the last part. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the honorable uh, invitation. The idea, the vision of an ideal school is, I think, is a very easy topic to talk about. Uh, before I give you a program, and I, I've got no uh, PowerPoint presentation, I tell you first a little bit what I'm doing on the ed educational sector. One I can cut briefly, I was involved, I'm still involved uh, in, in, in helping people found the Wilds, which you will uh, see tomorrow, which is quite lucky because tomorrow we've got what in German we call Tag der offenen Tür, which means something like a public day. And the spirit is not the teachers guide you through the school, but the kids on their own guide. So they're not controlled at all, because what's a school for? It's for the kids, uh, it's for the youth, and they should tell what's working, and what's always more interesting, what is not working. The people say we've got the idol school and I present you one hour that everything is wonderful, I always get skeptical. Um, because like your open street mate idea, and just, ah, it's not finished. Learning is never finished. And it's always involving and although sometimes it's cruel, if we look on our individual lives where we really learn something that was not nice always. <laughs> because we did some failures and, and ah no, that doesn't work like that, we have to change direction. Which in theory is positive when you are in that situation. Maybe this wonderful saying, if you're in a deep hole, first thing, stop digging. You just have to learn about that. Um, I want to speak about another initiative on education where we can bridge that we don't have educational <coughs> sector which are the schools and they have a big door and it's only learning normal people please keep out and there's real life. I think of the really big challenging things bring it together. And I want to give an idea of an initiative of two schools I founded in South Africa. The first in 2008, the second in 2010. You find it in, in, in your papers there on the internet. It's called Ituba. Ituba is a Zulu name which in English means opportunity. And I think that's what education is about, creating opportunities. If you grasp it or not, no teacher can guarantee that. You have to create opportunities, but at the end, learning is something people have to do on their own. Um, how do we organize that? Maybe the building of the school gives an idea, which also in my green, political green head, I can could develop a theory out of that, but I give you the, the principle. The school was developed in that way because we had no idea of funding, we had no idea of, of nearly everything. We just said, after having the Wald, which is for, unfortunately, primarily kids from parents who can afford it because of an Austrian sit situation which is ridiculous and we didn't want to join a religious community. We just say our principles are the human rights. So if we are, would be Muslim, or if we would be Catholic, or if we would be Protestant or Mosaic, we would get funds. We are just the human rights, sorry in Austria. Then you have, the people, you have to pay for that. So at the beginning there are no funds. This school was built by students, or still is built by students of archi architectural universities, who in, who in their curriculum have to design airports and hotels and whatever, in detail, show it to the professor, the professor said, hmm, yes, no, 
three, two, beautiful, no, and then they throw it away. Four, five, six times. You, you're learning in university. And my idea was, what if those who have to design a house, design a part of a school in South Africa, our school, and then they collect money together with us, and then they go to the aeroplane, which from the footprint is not so fine, but you, we can do everything, uh, and then build the school on their own. So, since starting in 2008, 12 different universities designed different houses for their growing schools, <coughs> and together with the people of the township, with huge unemployment rate and, and, and actually terrible social situation, and with all the kids from the school, transfer skills in building and in maths, for instance, because if you build a house, you have to have some ideas of maths. And now the school is, the first school has 330 pupils learning, the second is 115, still, is still growing. And I think this kind of organizing learning, not we bring them something, but our students who produce something, a house, learn tremendously. In, they have to do it within 8 to 10 weeks, so set up a structure. I can show you a lot of pictures you have in, on the internet. Uh, I think this is a concept of learning, not in theory, do something. Just remember from the student side, which different it makes if I, pro if I design something for the professor and put it here and see what you think out of it. Or if I have to design something and I know I have to build it. In a situation which is difficult, where you don't get the right materials, where you get the wrong materials, not on the exact date, and every day you have to, yeah, what's life about and what's learning about? To adopt to a new situation. And what's interesting, they spent, I say they spent their wealth, the students, their wealth of time, of skills, of enthusiasm, and they get something out for them. And what is interesting, although they, most of them, they even pay for their flights, they give poor African kids a school. At the end, they come to me, that makes my face red. They say, thank you, Christopher, for the opportunity. They say, thank you that you were there for 10 weeks and did such a tremendous work. I think that's what learning is about. And that's the idea of what learning institutions could be. Do something in reality. Help people to create a better world. And through doing this, be developed as a person with your heart, with your skills, with your brain, that you need science and all these things, what we have. I think this could be a concept. And instead of explaining that in theory, I just explain a little bit what I'm doing. And as you see, I'm more than like it. <laughs> uh, so I'm quite scarce of time in my job, just a few meters over there. I'm city, a member of the city council. Uh, enthusiasm, here's a colleague of mine, enthusiasm happens not, not so often. <laughs> Sometimes the political job is, no, let's call it difficult. I like, I'm a politician, I like what I'm doing. Uh, but seeing what is possible if young people with their energy and with their skills and, yeah, with what they have create something in the world, that's what we should develop. And I think that's what the future should be, and that we're working on. I don't know what you're doing, but I think what you are doing is create something in your country. Last sentence, and then we just have a, maybe a, a short talk. It's about freedom and discipline. 
That's the two issues from my personal side. You can't tell a person, be creative. I tell you in detail what you do. Please work like that. No student would come. I hand over responsibility. But if there are 20 students who never actually built the house, and they have to build the house within 8 to 10 weeks, they need to be disciplined. And the number one has to rely on the number two, and the number two has to rely on the number three. And, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick today, I don't want to. No, come on, we need you. And this kind of discipline which is within us, and not is introduced by... Uh, and by the way, that's also what democracy is about. And so for me also a good education system is a police, like... Uh, uh, some people say the foundation of our democracy, which, we, which is nothing like a driving license, you have it once, you have it forever, but has to be renewed every year, and the education system, in a way, is the heart of it. Thank you very much. because since six years, no, since eight years, I think, white students for three weeks go to one of the South African schools and they do there what they can do. And I think this is one of the most moving and learning situations for young people. Oh, yes, they are 16 then, something 15, 16, to come to a situation which is so different where they live and there is scarcity of everything what is normal to us, water and food and security and blah blah, they come back changed, transformed. So I can't, I wouldn't put an uh, eight-year-old and say, go there. Uh, well, I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a three years old now, boy, and a six year old daughter, uh, six, no, six uh, weeks old daughter, 
Oscar with three was in South Africa because I have to manage there. He was with us and with my wife because it's, we try to bring holidays to get. Also for him with to play with the kids. So I can't give you in detail what you do because that would be the wrong answer. The right answer is that those who work with the kids should not find, should explore the right answer together with the kids, try something, sometimes fail, learn out of the failure, yes, and responsibility, I know what I'm talking about, no, you know what responsibility sometimes puts pressure on your shoulders, where you ah, no, please, is there somebody here, it's too much for me. To carry that load, you have to learn. So, how to take over responsibility is one thing our schools are missing because also the Austrian schools, that's the big disadvantage of public schools, they are not allowed to take responsibility. They have a plan by the state, by the bureaucracy, what to do. I know those innovative schools and I ask them what is their biggest challenge, they said please let us do what we want to do and they are interfered. So yes it's possible to take over but it has to be developed by those who, uh, who live and talk with the children. Yeah. So yeah, uh, many people here with a background as teachers and they can hear what you say, you say that's up to the school to find yeah. ways of, for this social, maybe call it social entrepreneurship yeah, or something yeah. like that. Of course there are thousands of possibilities if you can see them and if you take them. But uh, entrepreneurship is more than creating a firm, it's also creating yeah. social entrepreneurship and that's what you want to find. And yeah. it was yeah, your question too, so thank you for that reminding us this very, very important issue. Um, shall we change the issue here, because you know, all we can go on with this, <laughs> enormous track. Um, other? Uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, I'm from Spain, and I'm living here in Vienna, so I'm very grateful to get to know to your school tomorrow. One of my questions is that if you may know this kind of similar experience like you are doing in walls, like High Tech High from San Diego in California, do you know the Institute High Tech High? High Tech High? Yeah, if you, if you know, if you don't know, maybe you can look at yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting, it's okay. like very similar. The other thing I just wanted to comment is like, uh, for two years ago, I was traveling around the world visiting innovative schools. Then uh, we make a book about what they have in common, what they are very good, what they are, what they are doing that is so great, and how can we take these things and put it in our school. And then we make a map, a social map in the net to see where are these schools, how can we communicate with them. And then I'm, I'm very happy to hear about this experience because it's mapping innovative education is what is coming next, and I think it's very intelligent to, to, to follow this, this lead. But my question is that you could maybe explain a little more how is that good? What is can when you map something, because I think that the, the experience is great, now is how are we could all uh, become better associations because we map what we are doing. What is about this maybe this idea about content curation or like about what? content curator, yeah. then how how knowledge is better when we mapping innovation, if you could say a word, because yeah. I think this would be interesting to hear. Thank you. Um, the mapping gives you some, uh, some, some spatial idea. It gives you some, you, some the, the kind of the, a feeling to it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it gives you a relation where to find things. Uh, one really important thing that you have to work out, and that, that is the social process that is really difficult, uh, how you categorize, how you, like for example, as we heard before, there are, uh, like for example with PBÖ, the schools, they can have different plans. 
like and uh, probably all the schools and all, uh, all the, the uh, free all the uh, private schools they have kind of different plans and there are some that have similarities in their plan but you cannot see with the uh, with uh, uh, the data in which network they are and like for example to work that out and see uh, who is there who could we po possibly have a conference on our plans like that how do you do that the Jena plan for example how do you do that do that how do you do that or like for example the um, the data you collected on your map I'm really interested in it and if you would deliver me a list of that it would be oh nice you know a list uh, of, of links and stuff but if you give it to me on a map it's like ah there they are ah okay I, I get another image you know that's 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 what is so inspiring with the mapping yeah and the filters is something that is really important yeah that gives it value if you don't have the filters it's nice but that really gives it value <laughs> Thank you for the you that to us. I'm also one of you extremely looking forward to visit this hall tomorrow. Uh, but just <laughs> you, you mentioned in that in your speech uh, one word and say you oh, are just collecting money and, and then oh there. <laughs> Could you just more specify? <laughs> which was started with my former wife, you would meet her tomorrow. And then one of the uh, projects are in Spain, for instance, one they go. The Waltz means, maybe it was explained, Waltz mm -hmm. is a medieval tradition of through walking through Europe and working here and working there, that's the way you learn. So on the Waltz is, yeah. yeah, okay. And so they are walking to Spain and to Great Britain and even just once to South Africa. I give an example how things happen. It's a very quite personal. You see a quite beautiful building tomorrow. It was not an old building, it was a former water pump project. It was quite empty. And before that we started because we had no money and we had actually not a I, a precise idea how that concept, which is, was 12 years ago quite unique, which kind of architecture would it need? So first we had no money, and second we had to try. So we just went in an empty office, which was handed over quite cheaply, because we couldn't afford. We stayed there for four years, and there we got the idea. And now there comes the money. I give you a story about that, which is true. It was up to me to find this, to find a uh, location. I found this location, it, it belonged to, uh, to the city of Vienna. I said, okay, if you renovate it, it's fine. I said, ah, okay, renovate it. It's just give it a few lamps and this and this. And it's, it's a maximum of, I re uh, remember details, it's a maximum of 150,000 euro. Ah, oh, wait, that's. We started renovating, but school, this fire department, and, blah, blah, blah. and in the midst of renovating, Money. it was not 150, <laughs> it was not 300, it was not 500, it was 800. <laughs> and that's the, set, that's the situation where it's like, uh, crazy, like, why do they start those crazy things? Uh, okay. But it's like canoeing. Maybe you know canoeing. If you are in the river, you can decide before you start. <laughs> but if you are in the river, you must get through it even you are. Otherwise you drown. And I know there's no concept. But sometimes it is. If, and this is the story I, I learned, if I would have known 
that renovating this building would cost 800,000, I would say no. <laughs> and we would be in a tiny little nice chip. Now we really have a good thing, which besides a great concept is also, as you will see tomorrow, a good architecture. So, but we could have failed. We were in the situation to get bankrupt on this. And it was, yeah, why did we succeed? Not because we were so strong. You always need partners. Without, just saying, I do it or we are so, we have the best idea in the world. And all these people who don't give us money, they're just stupid. We will do it. <laughs> it doesn't work, I think. You need people. And then you have to compromise also. I always say if you always focus, and this is also my political opinion, if I have a 100% idea and I say I want this 100% and not 99 and not 95, then you, then you have zero because you are not able to realize it. But this guy maybe he wants to join, he has a different idea. But he would join if, at, at the end, I was say a project should keep on to 75% of my beginning idea. And at the end, I say my 100% were wrong in the detail, because I learned something. <laughs> it's a concept, and those where I get money from, sorry, I keep it for me. With you, with 24 years ago, I was in the same situation. Being 25, no money, no building. So we are now at the school in the center of Prague. But my question was to, and I was a form, former PE teacher, as I know, yeah. can you? Uh, uh, um, <laughs> collecting money to the project for uh, for the building, uh, building school in South Africa. That was my question. Ah, okay. That's very okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we learn a lot from yes. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not so different. So first we've got sponsors from our side, okay. but now it's again joining, and maybe that's something like the size of no, half the size of a typical class architecture students who go to South Africa. This group or this group, you can decide afterwards who wants to go there. And I always say, okay, you 25 people, each of you knows 50 people, now multiply it. And within those, I know that from statistics, there are at least 5 to 10 very wealthy people. And most important thing, never be ashamed. I know you got 10,000 euro. And Come on, you don't change your life, help me. I'm going to South Africa, come on. You must be strong enough, I tell the students. We are a rich society. The worst thing, she says no. Oh, I come next week again. <laughs> uh, and so, trying all, and the students always are able to get some funds and 12 universities, each university comes twice or three times. So at least I think we've got 700 students and they manage and they find ideas and they find newspapers and hand over responsibility and give them tools and at the end if something is missing, ah, okay then we make it a little smaller and okay then the garden is then produced afterwards and if you first have all, if you say have First I have to have all my funding and then I start. You'll never start. So let's start smaller. Let's go the... I say uh, it's like giving birth to kids. When you have an idea... <laughs> if I may have this example. <laughs> my example it's not political on the <laughs> But if after nine months it's only just an idea. <laughs> you made a mistake. Now you help me. Okay, I, I, I think 
lunch is ready, you know. Should there be a last one now? Should we take the canoe string to the for the lunch? Okay. Uh, where is the lunch lake here? The same room. The same room where we were, so so one and a half hours lunch break. And thank you for coming. Thank you for inspiring.